Similar idea if we uh, start off by trying to test whether a Poisson distribution is a suitable model. This time, if we need to estimate lambda, remember lambda is uh, the expected value, so um, we could we could just work out the mean from our observed data, and that would be our lambda value because the expected value of any Poisson distribution is equal to lambda. Uh, that's the same calculation essentially as being done there. Um, and similar to binomial, if we've had to estimate uh, lambda, then we take away two for our, our, our cells for degrees of freedom. If we haven't estimated lambda, if it's given, then we take away one. So just look out for that for your degrees of freedom. The other difference that we've got with a Poisson distribution is the values then that X can take is not finite. With a binomial distribution, um, the finite number of values that X can take. So therefore, um, we've got a finite number uh, of cells. Um, but for a Poisson distribution, because X is not finite, what we must do um, is make a decision at the uh, top end. Okay, so theoretically, R can take any one of an infinite number of integer values. In practice, all those values greater than or equal to some number are put together because the probabilities are going to get fairly small uh, at the top end. Okay, so um, what you basically do to work out the value in the last cell is you just uh, take all the others away from one. So you're kind of using this idea over here that once you know all the others, you can fill in the last one uh, rather than actually trying to calculate it. Okay, so look out for that in the uh, subsequent examples. So here we go, number of telephone calls arriving in exchange, a period over eight hours uh, with the following results. So there's our observed frequencies. Can these results be modeled by a Poisson? Test at the 5% significance level. Question doesn't give us the value of lambda. We've had to estimate it by working out the mean of this frequency table. We can now use that lambda value to work out our expected frequencies. So use your Poisson function on your calculator or by calculation, we can work out uh, each of these. Note that um, once we get down to um, the higher values, so the top end, you can see that the highest observed was seven. So we don't need to go any higher than that. So um, when we work out for seven or more down here, we get this 0 0.6 by just taking the others all away from one. So that the expected, it's important that our expected values um, come to the same total that are observed come to. Okay, so that last one's just worked out by doing one minus all of the others. And then uh, again, notice that even though we've done that, we've still ended up with expected frequencies less than five. So we need to make sure we combine the cells for five or more to ensure that the expected frequency is greater than five. Okay, now we're set up to do our normal goodness of fit test. So we get our goodness of fit value to be 2.1. Degrees of freedom, you're taking away two because we estimated lambda. Critical value for as at the chi-squared four, 5% level. And then we can compare our goodness of fit stat with that critical value. And in this case, there is not enough evidence to reject H0. The calls may be modeled by a Poisson distribution. So just a couple of differences to look out for is this bit at the tail end. Um, it's done sl slightly differently uh, with a Poisson because it doesn't have a finite cutoff point um, and uh, how you go about working out your lambda value for a Poisson.